Hi guys, welcome to my simple kitchen. Uh, today I'm continuing the theme of super simple recipes while many of us are in isolation. Um, I have got a really delicious recipe. It's actually one of my favorite things to make at home. Um, it's a version of a, a pilaf that comes from Turkey, but it's not pilaf as in traditional rice pilaf. It's actually uh, the bulgur wheat pilaf with tomato that you always get on the side of kebabs if you go to a Turkish grill. Um, the recipe, I love it so much that it actually made it into my first book, Persiana. I'm gonna give you the full recipe, but also the pared down recipe. So um, in my humble opinion, uh, this has literally a handful of ingredients, three key ingredients, and they are bulgur wheat, chopped onion, tomato puree. Even though I'm going with a full version, which also has a bit of butter and has some diced pepper, you don't have to. And if you don't have bulgur wheat, you can use rice. And if you don't have rice, you can use quinoa. God knows quinoa needs the help. Quinoa actually the only thing that I'm walking into supermarkets and still finding on the shelf. Um, my mum loves this recipe, don't you mum? Yes, I do. She's here. <laughs> She's the person that presses the button on the video camera now. Video camera, iPhone. <laughs> okay, so first things first, I've got a pan on. I'm gonna do this 10 minutes live and then I'm prepped and I have a ready-made version for you later. I've got a pan on over a medium heat. If you're using gas, definitely medium. You don't want things to burn, okay? First thing I'm gonna do is get a little bit of oil in there. It doesn't really matter what oil you have. Okay, and then you want to soften the onions, okay? You can use onions, red onions, leeks, spring onions, whatever you got, even if you don't have them, ditch the onion, it doesn't matter, okay? It's a great flavor base, this dish, so to be honest, you could probably just do it with tomato puree and just the bulgur wheat, no drama. Okay, so just wanna soften the onions, <clears throat> excuse me, um, and get them nice and translucent, that's the most important thing. Okay, and then in here, I've got some diced pepper. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I had diced pepper. I had pepper in the fridge, which, I've ch which I wanted to use for this recipe, so bonus that I'm shooting it for you. Uh, you, do you really don't need to have this. It doesn't make a great flavor difference, but if you have it, or any other veg that's knocking around and you wanna chuck it in and use up, you know, by all means do. And then we've got bulgur wheat. Um, for a lot of people who don't know what bulgur wheat is, just cracked wheat. Um, it's a great staple, obviously it's not gluten free for those of you who are celiacs or just difficult, <laughs> just kidding, kidding. Um, it's really, really delicious and what I love about this dish is I can eat it hot or cold. It's a great side for things like grilled paneer, grilled halloumi, um, fish, meat, just on its own and usually I make leftovers the next day and just chuck it, like chuck whatever herbs I had in the in my pantry, nuts, dried fruit, and make like a like a salad out of it really. It's so, so versatile. And another great way to use up the leftover bulgur wheat is to mash them with your hands once it's been cooked um, the next day. Mash it with your hands and make little crispy patties. It's kind of, if you think about it, a little bit like um, a, a kubba, um, but just, you know, just quite simple. So this is so versatile, it goes with curries and stews and casseroles and so many different dishes, okay? So you can hear the onion sizzling. <clears throat> nice get nice and translucent and then I get in with my pepper just to soften that you don't want sort of crispy bits of pepper in there even after the cooking time you want to break everything down give it a fair shot okay and then I'm going to go in there with a good whack of black pepper doesn't matter when you put it in you can put it in later into the water if you like but I absolutely love pepper so this whole act of pepper takes a good 20 seconds for me to season something, okay? Now, quantity-wise, I just wanted to tell you, I went in with a medium, small onion, it doesn't really matter. Um, the recipe that I have in Persiana states one pepper, you don't have to have one pepper, I used half a pepper. And then we're going in with 200 grams of bulgur wheat, and I promise you, it does actually feed four, it's quite a lot for generously, I would say. And then you've got two tablespoons, heap tablespoons. This is probably more than two heap because life's too short. I don't measure stuff. <coughs> Squeeze it in. Um, measurements, not really important. If you wanted to add chili and other ingredients, now's your time, get it in. Um, in while the onion's softening with the peppers, just to give it time to sort of cook out. 
Next, going in with the bulgur wheat. Sit, nice and easy. What you want to do, you're not tr trying to cook the bulgur wheat, um, you're just trying to coat it in the onion mixture. Kind of like making a risotto, really. Okay, uh, next we've got tomato puree. Now, the tomato puree does need a little bit of cooking out. Nothing more than a matter of uh, sort of minutes, really, not minutes even, but you do want to sort of smoosh it a little bit before you add water to the pan because you don't want there to be sort of clump of un um, smoothed out tomato puree because then you'll just get this like odd lump of tomato bulk in, in the bulgur wheat and you want it to all kind of like mush into the bulgur wheat while you're cooking it now just before you add water so it's all even okay I'm going to show you what that looks like nothing too complex there you go no water no moisture there you go get that back on the heat then generous amount of salt because this is a grain it needs to be seasoned I'll let you decide I like two whacking great maybe two and a bit whacking great sort of uh, not pinches almost fistfuls of salt but that's a personal preference okay um, other spices that work well with this but are totally unnecessary just so you know um, things like chili things like cumin things like paprika if you fancy smoking um, you know the ingredients a little bit smoked paprika works really well but just it's got so much flavor with just tomato puree onion and bulgur wheat it's kind of like that lentil dish I made the other day you just absolutely don't need anything else okay so now now you can see that's all sort of mixed in and the bulgur wheat looks like it's all orange and evenly coated. Having a kitchen malfunction there with mama. <laughs> right, going to pour over 500 millilitres of just cold water from the tap, okay? You can do it with boiling water, but that will actually alter the recipe a little bit. And what else I will tell you is it's normally the ratio of liquids to grains changes quite a lot with different recipes. With rice, it's one and a half times the volume of liquid to rice itself. With bulgur wheat, it is similar, but because there's onions and tomato puree and peppers, that changes the ratio. So if you're just going to cook with, let's say, onion, I would kind of even sort of sink it down to about four to five of water. It, you can't, it, you won't undercook it. You can't go wrong. And if you're just going to do bulgur wheat, tomato puree um, and uh, water, then I'd probably just stick to the one and a half times uh, volume volume and just keep it on a gentle heat. The one thing I will tell you is when it cooks, sometimes it forms a little crust at the base. You know we're Persian, uh, even though this is a Turkish dish, we call that tadi, bottom of the pan, nice and crispy. What a bonus texture, chef's perk to eat. Give everything a quick stir, you've seasoned it, you've got everything you eat, everything you need in there. That's it, Bob's your uncle, job done. Lid on and just basically make sure it's on a gentle heat for 15 to 20 minutes, sometimes 25, depending on your cookery sauce. I would definitely tell you that it is um, gonna be more aggressive over a gas heat, so turn it down, okay? Now, because I'm prepared, because there's no way I could have done this live, Here's one I made earlier. I wanted to say that, that's so cheesy. Also, butter, you can add butter into this mix. I did add it into the other um, batch that I made live for you, but you really, really don't need it. Mama, stop looking at the camera, looking at the time. She's looking at the time to make sure I'm all right. It's putting me, putting me off, <laughs> okay? I've got a plate here, and I've got my other batch that's been on the cooker. Literally, don't go in there with a spoon. It's really, really important. Just fluff it up with a fork and you're good to go. Here we go. You can see it's quite a lot. It's all coming out. Absolutely tons. Four, six, even more. I'm telling you, there is so much more in that pan. And look at it. It's just really, really delightful, quick, easy recipe. Um, to, to just kind of feed everyone in these times. Um, it's falling everywhere. Here it is, it's my tomato and bulgur wheat pilaf recipe. It's absolutely delicious. It's these kind of things that we should be cooking right now using store cupboard staples that are versatile. So pack full of flavor, never needs to be complicated.